this is traumatizing to hear it <laughs> secondhand, and honestly, it's traumatizing to think about this. You can only listen to government propaganda. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay, so you had no, you have no electricity, so you see China. Yeah, and they have light, electricity at night time. And that's when we thought if we go to China, maybe we could find some food to eat. That's how, why we escaped. And how did you get there? Uh, my sister escaped first, and she left me a note, and she asked me to go find a lady and who was going to help us. Because in the North Korean border, there are like wire electric fences with the machine guns guards standing guarding the border. So the whole country is a prison. Mm -hmm. And this lady bribed the guards and then helped us to go to China. And the reason that she helped us, she was selling us to Chinese. She was selling you? Yeah. Wow. So you got sold. So you think this might be the dream, I'm going to get out of this country. Mm -hmm. And you step into a different kind of a nightmare in yeah. China. And what was that nightmare like? I mean, as soon as I arrived in China, my mom get raped. And I was like 13 years old. Like I, that was my introduction to sex. And in North Korea, we don't even have a sex education. So I didn't even know that was rape. It just looked horrible. And then they, and this is the thing, like people think slavery ended somehow. It's continuing right now. And they sold my mom for $65. And they sold me as a sex slave for less than $300 in this 21st century, and they separated me from my mother. In China? Mm -hmm. OK, and how, how long, so this is, this is obviously human trafficking. Mm -hmm. um, and how long did this go on for? Almost two years. And these were Chinese people? Yeah, Chinese. Uh, so China had a one-child policy. And because of that, they are like almost 40 million men cannot find women. Mm -hmm. So they buy these North Korean girls and put them in the brothers. And sometimes a village by a one girl and rape her just until she dies. And they also get North Korean girls and get the, our organs out. Wow. So right now there are North Korean, like 300 North Korean defectors, mostly girls, are being sold and raped in China, under CCP right now. Wow. So you have, it, it's, it's like being caught between two communist nightmares. You have one group of individuals that are escaping mm -hmm. um, because of their, the communist nature and they can't survive and they can't eat. And then they yeah. arrive into another nightmare where you have men that are deprived of sex, deprived of women, and they're creating another nightmare yeah. by sex trafficking and raping women. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is an absolute nightmare. It, it's caught between two, two hells. It's a different planet. Yeah. It's not even, yeah. And sometimes I cannot believe like the phone in my hand is more ex expensive than me. Right. And like crazy whenever I go to this like Walmart and looking at this uh, like puppies mm -hmm. have their toys and like puppies have more rights than human beings in North Korea. Oh. And all these people are going crazy about like animal rights and they're like, do you even know there are how many millions of people don't even know they have human rights? Right. And this is the interesting the world that we are living in right now. So how did this, this sex trafficking nightmare end for you? How did you break free of this, this second prison that you were in? I was rescued by Christians. So there were Christians coming from South Korea, and they literally risked their life because China, the North Korea sends agents to snap, kill them, assassinate them, and China put them in their life sentence. So this missionaries comes and set up a shelter house and rescue these girls from human traffickers. And once we are there, we study Bible. And then that's when they told us, you can go to South Korea. And I asked them, like, how can we go to South Korea? We don't have passport. You literally have to walk across the frozen Gobi Desert from China to Mongolia. Uh -huh. And if you make it, and if you don't die from cold and eaten by animals, then you can't go to South Korea. So that's what I did in 2009 when I was 15 years old. We'll get back to the show in a moment, but first, I need to talk to you about where you're buying your meat. Since 2015, over 100,000 independent farms and ranches in the U.S. have shut down because foreign meat is stealing their businesses and robbing you of quality and flavor that you deserve. That's why Good Ranchers is here. They exist to support local American farms and help you make great American meals. Get the beef, chicken, and seafood that can't be imported at goodranchers.com slash Candice. Last week, Good Ranchers upgraded their website to handle the traffic that came from listeners of this show. Thank you guys for supporting Good Ranchers because they support us. If you had trouble ordering last week, goodranchers.com is back and better than ever with an extra special limited time offer. 
Go to GoodRanchers.com slash Candice right now and subscribe to get 10 free Bistro Filets and save $25 on each box of mouth-watering American Meats for Life. That's GoodRanchers.com slash Candice. So this just makes me think, so we have all of these governments in the world talking about social justice, talking about Green New Deals, talking about environmental justice, um, talking about, you know, we, we, are, we need to be the liberal leaders in the world. Mm -hmm. And you are telling me the story about something very real that the governments could help and make an impact on. Yeah. Uh, they could um, send in troops, you know, try to stop this sex trafficking that's going on in China. Rather than that, they're doing deals with China. They're helping to enrich China. And the people that are saving you are not people from government organizations, which take trillions of dollars from individuals, um, but Christians yeah. who are persecuted by governments. Yeah, and the pastor who rescued me and the missionaries who rescued me, some got killed and in the lifetime prison in China right now. So they risked their lives? Some of them were alive and some of them died. Wow. How long did it take you to, to traverse through Mongolia? How long did it take for you to get there? And where, was your mother a part of this story? At this point, I found my mom back. It was a long journey. I found her, I lost her, and she had to be sold again. And in this journey, we had eight people. We had a one young baby boy, and I was 15, and other people, mostly women. And we had one compass in our hand. And they literally say, go follow the north and west direction, and cross like a eight wire fences. So if you don't get electrified from wire fences and get shot, you make it and we did it. So it took a one day, of course, but it was like minus 40 degrees in February 2009. So the guards thought like nobody's crazy enough to cross desert right now in this freezing cold. So that helped us to not get discovered by the guards. Wow, wow. And so you made it to Mongolia. Mm -hmm. And then what, you got nothing? Then they put us in the detention center, and then they eventually helped us to go to South Korea. And it's interesting, America has opened the door for all other refugees, but not that to North Koreans even then. Mm. So, so far actually, about 200 North Korean defectors made it to America over the last 80 years. The last 80 years? Yeah. And we've got about two million that have already come from the southern border in this, <laughs> in this last year. Yeah. And we just can't make time to help anybody in no, Asia. No, somehow they don't want North Koreans. Right, and, and many people that are coming in, by the way, are not in these circumstances at all. They just go, people are promising us free stuff. In fact, ironically, they're falling for the same lies that once took place in North Korea. We're gonna give you free this, we're gonna give you free that. When in reality, the goal seems to just be we want, we want to take more power for the government. It's like nothing is free. How come it's free? Like nobody, nothing is free. And yet so, so many people believe it can be free yeah. because of indoctrination. They believe yeah. that they can, they can just wave a magic wand and things can be given to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is, I mean, I guess I have to ask this question. How did you keep going? I mean, where, how did you find it in yourself? You're 15 years old. I mean, you've seen more horror and more trauma than most people ever experience in an entire lifetime, right? What was it inside of you that made you keep going? Uh, I think this is very interesting. Even though my father didn't have education, like in America, it's all about like, oh, if that's how you feel, like it's legitimate. I think like they're almost like, like safe space, emotional feelings. But my father told me as a younger, it's like there's a toy, like the two round things. If you knock it over, it comes back. Knock it over, it comes back. And he always told me, you gotta be like that, resilient. Yeah. No matter how hard life hits you, you gotta come back up. Wow. So I think that value he instilled in me really kept me going. So it's the exact opposite value system that we're kind of raising up American children with, which is that every single feeling that you have matters, it's, yeah. it's valid, you should collapse every time something bad happens to you. <laughs> you were raised the exact opposite, in the exact opposite manner, yeah. and you've somehow survived so much. Yeah. So how did you come to America? How, what, was, what was your story here? I know, I wish. So I had to come to America as a South Korean citizen and the fact that I could pay taxes and so I had to come with as a very long process of paperwork with the lawyers. So that's how it came. But I came to initially to write my book, my first book, and then I went to Columbia University in New York. Mm -hmm. So that's how I came like almost five years ago. And are you, are you a citizen here? No, I filed for citizenship and they said to hear back from them takes 18 to 11 months. Wow. Just to hear back from them. Wow, oh my gosh. It's like, it's like 15th century or something at right. this point. Right. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> 
Yeah, well, they're a little tied up because they're just allowing everyone in at the border, I think, at the moment. So they might be a little <laughs> backed up in the process. Um, it, it, it must be totally insane for you to step into America, to be here, you said for five years, yeah. to see this life, to see electricity, you know, to see the way people are living, mm -hmm. to hear about them talking about oppressions, but also, what does this all mean to you in terms of the government? I mean, in the, in the era of COVID, mm -hmm. in the era of we're gonna help you, we just need to take away your freedoms. Like, can you put this into context for Americans, uh, how it makes you feel? I think this is exactly like repeat, history repeating itself right now, right? Like North Korea came, almost this is what shocked me. For me as a North Korean, when they said there's an inequality in America, it's like, oh, hallelujah. <laughs> that means you can rise to above somebody else because there's no inequality in North Korea. Everybody's dirty poor. And in America, they were like, inequality is something, the worst thing that can ever happen. And for me, it's like, Poverty is something that is the worst thing can happen, right? Inequality means somebody can become a billionaire. Mm -hmm. They can start SpaceX. They can start companies. It means there's economic mobility. Exactly. But like in America, somehow people are so like brainwashed. I don't even know. But they say, look at us. We have homeless. Like, that's great. You have freedom to even homeless. Mm -hmm. And they're like, look, look at us. We have inequality. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> How amazing is that? So that's why it's like almost... When I was actually at Columbia at the orientation, I was like, is this a North Korean classroom? Because in North Korea, they literally say, like American bastards are one word, by the way. And they say- American bastard. Okay. So they say, oh, because American bastards, we don't have electricity. Because wow. of American bastards, we are very poor. And at Columbia, it's like, oh, because of white men, we mess up Africa. Because of white men, we have a climate change. Because of America and like the founding fathers, we have all these problems. Wow. The anti-American, that sentiment was even stronger than what North Korean classroom teaches us. Wow. So I was like, wow, I guess Kim Jong-un gets the all this like, you know, handbook curriculum from American University at this point. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> Very much, yes. He's copying Korea. the professors. Yeah. <laughs> wow, wow, that is incredible. Thanks for joining me on this segment of Candace. If you like this video, subscribe to this YouTube channel and ring the bell to get notifications on new videos. If you want to watch the full show, become a member at dailywire.com slash subscribe. Use code Candice for 25% off your new membership.